Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 135th scale American T-28 Super Heavy Tank. Unlike many of my other smaller scale build videos in which those builds are built for private commission and belong to a private collector, this model here was built for my own collection and is not for sale and or purchase. If anyone is interested in having a model built to these specs, you can contact me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com for pricing and availability information. Here's a quick walk around the model. The model started off as this plastic 135th scale kit from Dragon. The kit itself was acquired about four or five months ago and was recently started and built up to the condition that you see here. The model is built mostly out of the box, however, the Dragon kit does lend itself for several add-ons which does improve the look of the build. I'll be going over these in the video. Before I continue with the video, I'm going to go ahead and step back to when the model was first started and with when the model was unboxed. That way you get to have a feel of what the kit contents were. And here goes the model just before construction. One thing as of note, this Dragon kit here is actually the first plastic rendition in 135th scale of this vehicle. Prior to that, the only 135th scale option available was the resin kit from Accurate Armor. Let's open it up and see what's inside. As you can see, you're going to have a lot of tracks. The vinyl tracks are one feature that make this tank already better than the Accurate Armor offering, in my opinion, in that the Accurate Armor version was all individual link in length. Some photo etch. Aluminum barrel, springs probably for the suspension, as well as tow cable. Here are the plastic parts, these are obviously the sides as well as the pump mantle and other components. Detailing is pretty good, it's quite contemporary for what you would expect to see from a modern kit. A lot of rehashed components from their Sherman series. Due to a lot of the similarities between the Sherman components and the T28, it saves time and tooling and having just give you some of the runners from their other tanks. Upper and lower hull sections. Cast texturing is done quite well. All in all, looks like it's going to be a nice kit to build. Rubber tires, molded separately, which makes them easier to paint, as well as more rehashed Sherman parts from the previous tank. And they're all parts with the HVSS suspension. This runner here is new, and this contains components that are specific for the T28 HVSS, which differed from the Shermans. In that the shock absorber mount that rides on the top of the HVSS is absent on the T28 suspension. Here we have the teeth for the track. 
as well as the instructions themselves. As you can see, you can have a lot of spare parts from building one of these kits. The instructions are typical for Dragon. And should come in handy when assembling the model. As you can see from the model's components and the model in its built state here, the kit is a very nice kit. The parts have very good fit and matching to them. There's very little need for filling and putty work on this model here. Now, there are a lot of parts and a lot of parts that are very small and intricate. Because of that, this model is more suitable for medium to advanced model builder and not really recommended for someone just starting out. First thing that we notice here is that I built the tank in the battle mode, which means that all of the four tracks are assembled and the side sponsons are in the mounted state. Now, Dragon does advertise in order to build this model either in the combat mode or in the storage mode, in which the two side skirts would be connected together in a wagon format and will be towed behind the vehicle. However, even though Dragon says this option is available, this model is really meant to be assembled with its side skirts on. The reason why I say this is because the Dragon Kit omitted several key features that are found on the interior portions of the side skirts that are not present on the kit. In addition to some of the features missing on the side skirts, the one major hiccup that this kit has that is not seen in the assembled state but would be seen in the transport mode would be that, would be that of the sprockets. The kit utilizes sprockets that are from an M4 A3 E8 with the HVSS suspension. The kit utilizes four of them. The real T28 however did not utilize Sherman sprockets. In fact the sprockets on the T28 were specially made for the T28 in order for them to couple together like the way you have it here. This coupling system is absent on the Dragon kit. Again, once the kit is assembled in this state here, it is totally unnoticeable. But if you are going to model this vehicle in the transport mode, it will be an issue to deal with. However, in an upcoming model showcase video, I will be comparing and contrasting the Dragon 135th scale T28 along with the Accurate Armor 135th scale T28 kit. It's interesting to compare and contrast too, as there are some key features on the Accurate Armor model which are missing on the Dragon kit. More information on this will be posted in that video showcase. As for the Dragon kit, the kit does have the majority of the external detailing that you see here. This would include all the little mounting provisions for the cranes in both the front and the rear portion of the vehicle. What a lot of people don't realize is that in order for the tank skirts to be remounted to the center hull. This would be done in field via these two large cranes that we have here on top of the tank. These cranes would be positioned along these little bosses here, almost like the way a vise is mounted inside of a milling machine. By tightening these four bolts, they get mounted to these little rails. By doing this, you could position the crane in several different ways in order to get the side skirts conjoined in the correct manner. Now, also one thing to keep in keep of note is that this tank was really just a prototype. A lot of these features are extremely impractical in the field and would have probably would have been replaced with another system but the tank never evolved to that step where these features were developed. As for the kit cranes themselves, the cranes are nicely detailed and do have the manual winch mechanism that's part of the detailing. On the real T28, a lot of the components are missing on the real model, so the in the T28 and its current status today, it's kind of uh, missing jigsaw puzzles how these cranes actually worked. However, what is found on the cranes is not only a manual winch, but there is also an electrical pulley winch which would have been mounted in this location over here. This feature is missing on the Dragon kit. While we're on the transport capability of the T28, that leads us to these two drums here which are found on the top deck. 
A lot of people who are building the T28 are unaware of the purpose of these two drums. The purpose of these two drums are actually handbrakes for the side skirt when in the transport mode. Like I mentioned before, the side skirts would be unbolted from the center portion of the tank, and then they would both be connected to each other to create a large, unpowered tracked trailer. When this trailer would be towed behind the vehicle, these drums here would be removed from the top deck and mounted to the sprockets, which are exposed when the piece is in transport. Rope is then looped around one of the U-hooks, which connected together, and wrapped around several times on around the drum, and then emerged from the trailer. Each side skirt section would have a rope emerging from it. Then you would have about 10 to 20 men per assigned per rope, and they would actually play tug-of-war with this massive heavy trailer to prevent it from crashing into the tank if the tank was going downhill. Again, this is very impractical in practice and in the field, and probably would have been replaced with some kind of air brakes or hydraulic brakes if the design would have progressed further than it did. Because of the way the kit is designed, there is no detailing underneath the drums here, so if you're going to make the tank in the transport mode, you would have to modify the kit in order to have it properly displayed. Otherwise, if you follow the kit, you'll have the, the side skirts in transport mode with the drums still mounted to the top deck. While we're on the transport drums themselves, you'll see that I went ahead and weathered them with some rust and steel texturing, which replicates the rubbing that the brakes that the brake ropes would have had on these components here. These rods here and these boxes also have to do with the transport mode of the tank. These rods here would be removed and they would actually be connected to the side skirts to create the trailer. Each rod would go f would join the first loop and the last loop on the two skirts conjoining them together. In the boxes here, there are small little pegs which would actually be inserted into portions here on the side skirt and this would further give more support to the side skirt trailer that I was mentioning before. Also what is unknown is that these small little retracted lifts here are actually small little feet to prevent the trailer or the side skirt from toppling down once the tank is disconnected from the vehicle these pieces here actually would be unlocked and would swing down and lock in the down position to create support feet in order to give these side skirts some more support and again to prevent it from toppling over this feature is found on both sides and are present on the kit and which are nicely done and nicely rendered in the scale. Some strange quirks with the kit are as follows. There are several details that are found on the Real T28 and are actually supplied with the kit, however, are not recommended to be used in the tank's instructions. This would be the case with the first aid kit, which is mounted on the rear corner, as well as the tow hitch cluster that we see here. The because of the towing capability of the T28, it had to have dual tow hitches mounted in the back. The first tow hitch location would be for actual towing of the tank if it got stuck. The secondary tow hitch or the tow pencil would be for that of the transport trailer like I mentioned previously. Now the kit does, does not supply you with the secondary mount for the hitch. They only supply you one tow hitch mount for the use on the bottom. The hitch and the secondary mount that you see here are not included in the instructions, but however are included with the kit as a spare part runner that isn't supposed to be used for anything. Rather than having the pieces sit and languish in my spare parts bin, I simply just added them to the tank, completing it to the way you see it here. Now some details on the model I actually scratch built. These details would be starting with the tow cable, cleats, and clamp. The, because of the towing necessity of the T28, there were two large provisions for mounting tow cables. 
The tow cable cleats that are found on the T28 are actually specialty made for the T28 and are not a stock off the shelf US tank component. The T28's tow cable cleats are as follows. They are comprised out of a single flat bar and have its ends curled up in opposite directions, thus creating the shape of the cleat. The T28 features five of these cleats, two of which are found on the front glacis plate. On the tank commander side, there is one more found in the rear. And on the opposite side, there are two more provisions mounted right above the side skirt. Also missing on the DML kit was that of the tow cable clamp, which I modeled in the closed state that you see here. Another detail that was missing was that of the brush guard for that of the siren. In fact, the siren itself was also a piece that was not added with the kit per se. The siren that you see here is actually found in the kit's components, but again, on a spare runner that some of the parts weren't necessarily used. The siren is the standard Dragon plastic kit siren. It's actually made out of clear plastic because it's found on the runner for the headlights and as well as some periscopes. The siren was simply mounted to the appropriate location and the brush guard was fabricated. The brush guard for the siren on the T28 was very similar to the brush guard of the siren found on the M26 Pershing. The brush guard that you see here is made out of brass and it's soldered together. Another quick little detail to add is that on the headlights themselves, unlike other American armored fighting vehicles in which the power cord for the headlight runs down the stem of the headlight and enters inside the vehicle. Because of the T28's design, the headlight actually had an external conduit that emerged out of the rear portion of it. On the real tank, there would be a conduit that would run along the top of the sponson and along the side of the hull until it would enter inside of the vehicle. Now again, because this model is built as the combat mode, adding that detail is not necessary. On the driver's side of the tank, there are two more headlights. They are identical to the one on the other side in the fact that they have the two external power cords present. Now on the real T28, there must be some kind of a plug mechanism in order to disconnect the light from the power of the tank in order to have the trailer separate for transport mode. Now, currently, as of the date of this video, the real T28 is sitting unassembled in a back lot in Fort Benning awaiting restoration. So hopefully one day someone could go ahead and take a picture of this section so that the rest of us can finally see what it looks like under here. Now, one piece of detailing that is missing on the Dragon kit and does hurt some of the accuracy of the model and it's also a detail, unfortunately, that I wasn't able to repair, is that of the inner track well side sponson detailing here. If we can notice, the Dragon Kit is just a simple, smooth panel with no detailing. However, on the real T28, you would see this exact same detailing here on this portion over here. What all these little fastener locations are, this is where the actual components for the suspension would be bolted to the tank. On a Sherman, this is actually what it kind of looks like on the inside. However, because the, the way the sponsons are designed, the fasteners are actually pointing outward towards the exterior portion of the vehicle. This same exact detailing would be found on both sides of the tank. And hopefully someday a aftermarket supplier will probably make a photo etch component that glues onto the side here that replicates and has all the missing detailing. Another quick piece of detailing that really helps look at the tank is the addition of the two little eyelets that we have here on the engine deck. The tank's engine deck is actually quite simple compared to other American tanks. Now there are two large blisters that emerge from the dividing wall. The purpose of these blisters is for the addition of these two eyelets. Moving towards the top portion of the vehicle takes us to the Tank Commander's machine gun ring. The T-28 Tank Commander featured a M2HB mounted on a ring mount. The ring that you see is the standard 
USAFV 50 caliber ring. Typically, these rings are found on soft skin vehicles such as deuce and half trucks, half tracks, as well as I even seen one mounted on a Cat D9 bulldozer. The T28 is really the only American tank to feature a 50 caliber mounted on a ring. And on the T28, it's unique is that the ring is actually missing its section here in the back. Purpose of that is so the hatch can open and also for the tank commander to get in and out of the hatch. The component that comes with the Dragon Kit is very nicely done. In addition with the nicely done ring, also comes with a very exquisitely done M2 HB. The M2 that you see here is built completely stock with no mods added to it. It's kind of hard to get into focus, but one thing that the Dragon Kit has is that the barrel tip is actually molded to have the hole in it, and so drilling out the barrel is unnecessary. The Dragon 50 caliber also comes with both styles of cradles. You have the M23 cradle, which would be the type found on the T28, but also comes with the earlier style cradle, which would be found on earlier style American tanks. As for the cradle itself, you can see that the ring mount itself is a bit on the basic side. The type of mount that would be found on these 50 caliber rings would be that of like a claw type roller mount which would be able to roll on here. However, I do know that the aftermarket sets are available for this type of component. These three locations that you see on the top deck of the tank are actually the provisions for mounting the tank's antenna bases. Now to mount on the antenna base, you would have to not have the cap fitted. The cap that you see here is a cover cap and in its place, to have the antenna, you would have to have the cap removed, as well as add a small little well, which is present on the antenna caps on the T28 Super Heavy tank. While on the top deck, moving our way to the copula, the tank featured two late-style Commander's copulas. The, they're the standard off-the-shelf late-style Commander copula, which is found on Sherman's as well as Pershing's. The DML kit, the p component is very finely detailed in that the periscopes are actually clear plastic inserts that get added around the periscope ring. This needs to be done to both of the copulas. Also, that's a clear piece of plastic, is that of the periscope insert. This is also true for the loader or the gunner scope, which is mounted over here. The clear plastic inserts are a nice touch, however, I must warn, are very, very fragile and are very, very easy to drop as well as ruin when you're installing them into the copula. This is very similar to AFV Club on their M40 in which they molded the entire ring out of clear plastic in which you just simply remove the paint around the periscopes. Dragon did it as a more realistic way, but it's a little bit more fragile and something to watch out for for modelers. Moving our way to the front of the vehicle takes us to the main gun. Starting with the mantlet, the mantlet has its tarpaulin snaps integrally molded into the casting, which is a nice touch. The mantlet itself is also very nicely shaped and nicely rendered. It all has its rough cast texturing. It has its periscope protector visor. One thing that is missing on the Dragon Kit are two small little slot screws, which would be located in these two locations here. I do believe a aftermarket resin Mantlet is available that does have that missing detail. The gun can go up and down, but as you can see, it has a springing type feature which returns it back to the center state. There is no spring or any type of mechanism on the inside, it's just the way the plastic kit assembles gives you this little spring return. Unlike the real T28, the gun can only go up and down and it can't go side to side. Moving our way to the tank's gun. The barrel itself is the kit original and is actually made out of turned aluminum. It's very nicely done and no need for an aftermarket version is necessary. As for the double baffle muzzle brake, there leaves a lot of room for improvement. The kid muzzle brake looks like this one here. Due to the way that the runners are designed, you actually get two muzzle brakes. One to be used, the other one is basically a spare. As you can see, the kit design brake is actually very squared off in appearance and is missing several features which are found on the real muzzle brake. On the model, I went ahead and altered it by rounding off the shape of the muzzle brake and also adding the small little divots which were absent on the kit original. 
by adding these quick little mods to the muzzle brake greatly improves accuracy. Overall, I'm happy with the turnout of the build and both the quality of the starter kit as well as the final outcome of the completed model. If anyone is looking to add this to their collection, it's strongly recommended as it's a nice interesting piece which in the past would have to be either scratch built or would have to come from a very expensive full resting kit. And that concludes this model showcase video for this 135th scale American T28 Super Heavy Tank. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.